Hey everybody, it's Justice for Comics. It is Friday evening. I'm going to be doing a video here on the CBSI Hot 10 list. Uh, before we jump into that, uh, I did get a nice sized box from my good friend Marcus today. So I'm going to go over uh, some of the books that he sent me. Uh, my friend Marcus has one of the he has probably the best taste in comic books of anybody I've I've met. Um, he's turned me on to, to artists I'm not, I wasn't as familiar with before, like Dave Stevens, um, artists that I had some knowledge about, but not near as much, like Barry Windsor Smith, um, uh, Wrightson, Bar uh, Bernie Wrightson, just some really really cool artwork from this you know, the '60s and '70s, and. I'm going to be showcasing that uh, here this evening, some of these books. Um, I think you'll find some of them interesting and just really cool, really pieces of art is what I think they are. So so let's jump into it. Uh, first one here is Marvel Spot, uh, Spotlight on Star-Lord, The Saga Begins. So I don't know if this is the first... star. I know the first appearance of Star-Lord is... It was like in a magazine-sized book, but this might be one of his um, later appearance, obviously his later appearances. Um, so I don't know if this, I'll have to look into this. I don't know if this is a second or third appearance, but really cool book. All of these Marvel Spotlight books from the 70s are fantastic to have. I've got several of them. Obviously, some of them are way more expensive than others, depending on um, what key it is, but this is definitely just a beautiful book to have. And again, Marcus... He's like me. He likes to find books in really, really good shape with no spine ticks. So this is, you know, definitely a high grade book. I would say it's nine four nine six easily. I mean, it's beautiful shape. So love uh, having a book that's a forty center. You know, from the mid seventies in that kind of condition is fantastic. So awesome looking book. Awesome cover. Who doesn't like some Star Lord? That movie coming out with. Uh, will be the third installment of Guardians of the Galaxy. I think that's only going to be propelling that character's uh, value even more. Uh, another one that's really cool, awesome cover, is Batman uh, Arkham Knight Genesis. This is a book I don't have. I have, I think, issue number one of, one and two maybe, of Arkham Knight Genesis. Uh, just think that's a awesome cover. Yet, um... I was about to say Deadshot. Now you've got uh, Deathstroke on the cover there with Arkham Knight. That's a great showdown. Uh, I love Deathstroke. Deathstroke's one of my favorite DC villains for sure. I, I love the fact that they're having him on the Titans uh, TV series. I haven't seen that yet. I need to renew my subscription. I let my subscription lapse on uh, DC Universe. So I'm going to have to uh, check into that. I think that series... Could be worth uh, just the fact that Deathstroke's and it is is worth for me, worth it for me to check out. Uh, another one he sent me is Batman Arkham Knight number zero. I didn't have this book either. I didn't even realize there was a number zero. <laughs> so um, yeah, just cool looking cover. Again, awesome cover work. Just love that cover. So very nice. Love those two books there. Uh, Witchblade number one. I think this book is getting hot too. Um, I think they're making a Witchblade movie if I, if I remember reading that correctly. I was reading a, a Bleeding Cool or a CBR uh, article about it. About a, I'd say it was about three weeks ago. And I have seen um, other people do videos highlighting that they're hunting down Witchblade uh, number one. So really cool book to have. Again, another awesome looking cover. Did not have this in my collection. Um, I had a lot of 90s books from Image, uh, 90s and 2000s. I had Spawn and all that stuff, but I went through that phase where I sold a lot of my collection off. Um, and this is one I just never had. I don't know why I never picked up Witchblade, but um, yeah, I just am glad. To, I'm, very grateful to have that now. That is just a great-looking book. Awesome cover. 
All right, the next one here is uh, Contest of Champions number one. First White Fox appearance, and she's on the cover. So this is a key book. Very nice. I think this only came out a couple of, man, was it like a year ago? Let's say it was like a little over a year ago. So that is the variant. The variant's the one that you want to have because it has White Fox. Not only is she, her first appearance in this book, but also uh, that's her on the cover. So awesome looking cover. That is definitely a key book to have in your collection. And we've got um, White Fox. I don't even think I ordered it. I think I forgot to order this. I know, I know this book. I know the Virgin... Uh, copy of this has been going for crazy money. Probably because um, I think you had to order like 100 copies of this issue to get one of the virgins, which I'm sure there's a lot of shops that didn't do that. Um, and I know there was maybe only one on Midtown, and that sold out pretty quickly. So, you know, this book seems to be on the hot list. A lot of people's hot list right now is White Fox. So I uh, can't wait to read it. It should be very good. Looking forward to that. All right, next one in here is a nice uh, Vampirilla book. Uh, let me see who the artist is on this. This looks familiar. It's a Virgin exclusive cover. Came out of comic book. Uh, the website is Comic Book uh, Kingdom of Canada, which I've I've bought some things from them in the past. I've uh, I think John Gallagher does some exclusive covers with them. Uh, this cover, God, I gotta get my reading glasses on. I can't, I can't see anymore. <laughs> That's how you know you're getting old. Jeez. Uh, this cover is by, and I think it's by Frank Cho and Sabine Rich. Wait a second, let me go to the back. Usually on Vampirilla books, they'll give you the back. If you go to the very back page, it'll actually give you a list of almost all the covers, all the exclusive covers. Uh, let's see if I can match this up. Just wanna make sure I get it right if I can. If not, I'll post it in the comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry guys, I don't, I'm not, I should have had this a little bit more prepared maybe. Yeah, there's a lot of covers. I mean, I'll have to look it up. Um, just a really nice looking cover though. I just can't really tell who the signature is. I think it, meh. Yeah, I have a hard time telling what, whose signature that is, but... Awesome looking. It kind of looks like Kincaid's uh, artwork, but I, I could be wrong about that. Really cool looking cover. I think there's only a limited, uh, very limited number of these too. I'm gonna say less than 500, so it sold out pretty quick. So one of those Vampirilla books that everybody wants. Um, low print run, exclusive cover. It's a good combination. All right, so some of these books he sent me are DC books, uh, DC horror books from 1969 to 1975. Uh, Marcus wrote me a, a note here. Uh, they've been going up a lot in price over the past year. One of the reasons is um, these books were marketed to children, to kids, and obviously trying to find books where kids didn't, you know, if I was a kid, if I was under 10 and I had one of these books, you know, I probably would have... Uh, mangled it <laughs> I would have folded it up put it in my back pocket you know that I, I wouldn't have cared about condition you know usually kids don't really care about the condition of their books so uh, this is a really nice looking book Elvira's House of Mystery number 11 this is a Dave Stevens cover which Marcus has kind of turned me on to a lot of Dave Stevens work I'm trying to track down some other books that he's done um, uh, he was I think I think he's famous for doing, um, I 
Dave Stevens has done a lot of, I, I think he did artwork for The Rocketeer. He's done a, like, he's really good at drawing females. Uh, and that's just another great image of Elvira. Now the controversy on this, this cover was originally when he drew this, he had the broomstick going between her legs. <laughs> and, and the comic book authority obviously um, did not approve of him doing that. So um, that's another interesting fact that um, Marcus was kind enough to clue me into. I, did, I had no idea about that, but originally he drew the cover of the broom going through her legs. So I wonder if Dave Stevens, uh, if someone bought that original artwork, that'd probably be worth some money today, I would think. Um, but that's pretty cool. So you can see she's riding it. I mean, she's sort of on the side of it. I don't know. I don't know how you could ride, ride the broom that way, right? It, it's kind of ridiculous that you wouldn't put it th through the middle of your legs. All, all the pot, all the Harry Potter stuff, they're always, <laughs> they're always straddling it, right? But back then that was a no, no. That's, sexually suggestive uh so i thought that was pretty funny so how elvira's house of mystery and look at the condition on this book i mean it is absolutely fabulous uh so this is 1987 so uh early, mid 80s i think i was a freshman in high school then so yeah that's definitely going back in time <laughs> no doubt about it really cool looking book uh, next one is another Dave Stevens cover. Uh, yeah, Eclipse Comics. Dave Stevens did a lot of work for them. I mean, as you can see, he's really good at drawing females. Like, I mean, he's really good. I wonder if he did a lot of Wonder Woman covers back in the day. I'll have to look into that. But, yeah, he's excellent at drawing women. So this is Crossfire, number 12. Just a beautiful-looking cover. Awesome Dave Stevens work, really cool. All right, next one is a Conan prototype story by Barry, uh, by Barry Windsor Smith. Or I could say Barry Smith. I always say Barry Windsor Smith, right? I don't know. I think that's, I think that's how he used to sign his name back in the day. Uh, Chambers, Chamber of Darkness, number four. Just an awesome looking cover. I mean, look at the detail on that cover. Holy smokes, look how good condition this book is in. It's fantastic. So I definitely need to try to um, look for more of these 70s books. I should go, there's an older comic book shop near me that I think has some of that older stuff, older DC and the Marvel horror. I'm going to see if I can um, find a few more books to you know, keep the collection going. 15 Center, I mean, that's definitely an older book. So this is probably early 70s is what I would guess. Just a really cool looking cover, awesome. All right, next one is a Neil Adams cover. Who doesn't love Neil Adams? And again, um, back then DC was using these, sort of these Batman logos in the corner. Really cool, but man, that's a nice looking cover by Neil Adams. Get the old spider with a skull, a <laughs> skull head. That is awesome. It's 12 o'clock, The Witching Hour, number 13. Book's in awesome shape. Again, this is another um, early 70s, right? 15 centers. Might be even late 60s. I'll have to look and see what the date is on this. But um, yeah, just awesome looking book. I love that cover. Really cool. I can just only imagine seeing that on the rack when you were a kid. Man, I would have been... I mean, just kind of before my time, I really didn't start collecting comic books until like the mid to late 80s. So, yeah, I would have missed all this stuff. But, man, it's it's really cool to see it. Very nice. I love that cover. All right, the next one is Cull, the Destroyer, number 11 and 12. Um, the artist on this is... Mike Plug, I believe it is. Yeah, P L O O G, Plug. Really cool looking cover. Again, it's got that Conan vibe, right? Um, I think Marvel had both of these going at the same time, Cull and Conan. So there's Cull the Destroyer, number 11, and then there's number 12. 
Another really cool cover. Mike Plug. Interesting name. <laughs> Not the most marketable name, but uh, he definitely could draw. Very nice. I love I love that, those two covers. All right, we're getting near the end here. He sent me a nice, beautiful copy of Amber Blake number two. I believe that's the artist no, uh, no Debt that, that did the cover. This series is awesome. Uh, he sent me a number one before too, so I've, I've got a nice collection of Amber Blake going. Those are going to go in the personal collection for sure. Um, I like the I, I kind of like this oversized magazine where you really get some nice artwork. Um, this this is the type of thing you could put up on your wall. So one of the things I'm working on a project is eventually I'll have a, a comic book room with a, a wall. Um, some other YouTubers I've been following, I think they have some good ideas of how to design your room. Uh, I, I watch um, Silver Age Dave's channel a lot. He's got some interesting ways of displaying comic books. And I really want to display some of these magazine-sized comic books. Just an awesome-looking cover. Beautiful. Amber Blake number two. So nice. And that book's worth some money, too. Now, this one I can't believe he sent me. I mean, I was kind of shocked. He knows I love this series. He's the one that turned me on to it, in fact. I, I, I remember the day he, he messaged me, Marcus messaged me one morning and said, Hey, did you hear about um, that comic book Heathen? It, it just got optioned. Uh, I think they're going to they're gonna be doing a movie on it. And I never heard of the book. Um, so he sent me uh, number issue number one. I read that issue and fell in love with it instantly. I thought it was one of the best comic books I've read in a long time. Vault Comics, I mean, I really hadn't bought too many Vault Comic books f before. And I just, I loved it. So I went out and bought issue number two, number three, you know, second printings. I mean, I didn't, I didn't get the first printings on number two and three, but I, I got second printings on those. And then this, then st I think from issue four on, I just collected, started collecting it. And it is awesome. The only problem with this book is it doesn't come out very often. It's not a monthly title for sure. Uh, it's only up to issue eight right now, and it's been out since 2017. So, so he was kind enough to send me, uh, Marcus sent me Heathen number one, graded and slabbed at 9.9. .9. Holy crap. 9.9. .9. I don't have any 9.9s in my entire collection. <laughs> so this is my first one. I've got a few 9.8s, um, but I've, I've seen 9.9s. I've seen 10s, people that have showed them on their YouTube channel, but I've never owned one myself. So thank you so much, Marcus. This is my first 9.9 .9 CGC graded book. Um, and when you see this book, I mean, I can see why these get high grade because... Vault Comics uses super high grade paper. It's a card, thick cardstock cover. So it's a lot easier to get a high grade comic book when you have those covers versus Marvel, who almost sends you tissue paper <laughs> type of paper. You know, it's just thin and cheap and easily, it, you know, I, I've literally picked up some comic books. Uh, from Marvel where the ink like literally rubs off on your fingers. If you have a little too much oil on your hand, you know, everyone has oil on their fingers and hands. That's why they tell you not to handle a comic book um, without gloves on, if you want, you know, especially an older book. Um, but Marvel books are the worst. Just the, they're, they're, the black from the covers just will rub off on your fingers. Uh, but Vault Comics, I'm telling you guys, I, I've been – saying this a lot on my channel. Heathen is a great book. It's a great story. The artwork in it is awesome. Um, every, every aspect of it, the writing, the pacing of it, I just, the only, only criticism I have of it is it just doesn't come out very often. It's, um, you know, it, it's not a monthly title. It comes out when it comes out, <laughs> whenever the artist and the writer uh, get finished with the next issue is when you'll get it. So, that's the only problem with it is it's not going to come out regularly. So there, therefore, a lot of people don't know about the book. A lot of people haven't been collecting it. And it's just one of those books that I think you definitely should collect. Uh, at least go read it and trade paperback. I mean, I, I believe they do have a trade on it now. So highly recommend Heathen number one and 9.9 .9 grade. That is 
one of the prized books in my collection now. So thank you so much, Marcus. That is just awesome. All right, guys, we'll jump in real quick to the hot 10 list. I won't spend too much time on it. Uh, but let's jump into number 10, New Avengers of New Adventures of Toxic Avenger number one. Uh, I remember that movie from back in the 80s. It was terrible, uh, but kind of funny. I mean, it was... I think it got popular because of how bad it was. <laughs> so um, so the news is it's up from $10 to $30, and now it's a $40 book. Um, this is this is not a book that you'll find just sitting in, around in your LCS. Uh, who doesn't love some toxic Avenger goodness? So I don't know that there's any specific news as to why this book is just moving. Just Maybe just it's kind of one of those obscure cult type of movies um, and characters that, that people love. So... Um, yeah, it's on the move, 40 bucks. Uh, number nine, uh, Mimic number one. Uh, this was a cover price book. Notice, uh, it's supposed to be James Tinian, the fourth, but it says James. <laughs> it says James Tinian, the little typo there. Uh, this was cover price book now. It's 15 to $20. Uh, Seth Rogen optioned this title, uh, this, this past week. Uh, how did that Seth Rogen preacher stuff work for everybody? <laughs> yeah, it shot up in value. So uh, that's a book I don't have in my collection. So yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know that I'm going to go slap down 15 or $20, but that might be one to you if you're going to your local LCS, you know, look, look and see if it's in the back issue. It's a Boom Studios comic book. So I would imagine you're going to have a hard time finding that in the back issue bin. Uh, print run on that is probably pretty low. Number eight on the list, Spawn Newsstand Issues. So any any newsstand comic book of Spawn has been on the move. Uh, issue number 70 sold this week for over $400 for the newsstand. Holy crap, that's a lot of money. Um, it says here, you may not realize that I am not a Spawn collector since Spawn po pops up on the list so often. Spawn collectors apparently just want what they want and don't care about the price to get it, so... Uh, that's definitely true. I mean, I picked up that Spawn 249 for $10 at one of my local comic book shops, and that one sells easily for $75, $80 on eBay. So uh, it's worth looking in back issue bins for Spawn books, for sure. Number seven on the list is Turtles Ghostbusters. Number two, the blank variant. Uh, so why is this on the list? It's the second time a blank variant has hit the top 10. Apparently, this is pretty hard to find. As I couldn't find any currently listed on eBay, but a couple have sold over the past couple weeks for $30 to $40. Be on the lookout for this one in the back issue bins. So I almost never buy blank variants. Um, I like artwork. I like to see a cover with artwork on it. Um, but sometimes there is, a val there is value in buying a blank cover. Number six on the list, Batman Beyond number 25. So this is on the list. Uh, I mentioned this in one of my videos. I picked up a couple extra copies on Midtown for cover price, and I'm glad I did. It's a twenty to twenty five dollar book now, so I've got that coming in my next Midtown order. Uh, first appearance of Dick Grayson's daughter, who ends up becoming, I think, the new Batwoman in issue thirty seven. So that book is probably going to keep, you know, stay at that level or go higher. Um, so if you've happened to go to your local LCS, you may want to take a breeze and see if they have any of those in the back issue bins. That one could be there easily. And it's now like a 20 to 25 hour book. So don't be surprised if that goes higher. Number five on the list is X-Force number one, the Todd McFar McFarlane one in 100 variant. Uh, yeah, I agree with CBSI on this. Uh, the covers, I agree. The covers, meh. Meh, I don't think the cover's that good. Selling around $130 to $150. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think that one is overpriced. I wouldn't chase that one. So if you happen to see it really cheap, pick it up, but you probably won't, and I wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't be paying the, that price for that book. Number four on the list is Spider-Verse number one, the Todd uh, Nowak Walmart variant. 
So I've never seen comic books at Walmart. And if I had, um, if I, I think the ones I had seen were completely trashed. So I probably, where I'm at in Florida, <clears throat> we got a lot of Walmarts all over the place. And um, it's hard to find anything in good condition at Walmart, <laughs> let alone a comic book. So I don't think I'll ever find this. Um, I guess next time I'm at Walmart, I'll, I'll look in the aisle where the baseball cards are. It's usually where they'll have a few of those comic books. Uh, but this book is selling around $15 to $20. Um, I don't know. I guess there's a new character there, Spider Zero. So if you happen, if you happen to be in a Walmart, eh, take a look. Just You might get lucky. You never know. Number three is G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, number 21. Classic cover. I remember this book being hot probably 10 years ago, and it's still hot. Uh, 9.4 just sold for 400 bucks. Um, now a 9.6 is at 500. So high grade books of that issue are going for big money. Um, I don't. It's not the first appearance of Snake Eyes, is it? It can't be. Yeah, man, that, well, look at that. There's there's a 9.0 on on eBay for $750. It's a newsstand edition. Wow. Holy crap, that's a big book. There's a 9.8 for 1600 <whistles> Newsstand. Holy smokes. I don't know. $1,600? got to be kidding me. Uh, and it's not... I don't think it's a first appearance of Snake Eyes. Right? Uh, crap, I can't read. I, my vision is so crappy. It is the first appearance of somebody. Who is it here? Let me just look real quick. Oh, first appearance of Storm. Storm should... Uh, I can't... Silent issue? I don't know. It's not the first appearance of Snake Eyes. I didn't think it was. But that book is going for some sweet money right now. So if you have that, congratulations. Get it slabbed, I would say. Man, if that comes back on 9-8, you've struck gold. Number two on the list is Unsound number one. Uh, a good story. I bought the original series. I have it in my collection, uh, Cullen Bunn. I like a lot of Cullen Bunn's work. Uh, I liked it. I mean, the first issue was great, and I picked up all the issues. I think it was only a, I think it was like a five or six issue run. Uh, it is optioned, so now it's the first issue selling fifteen to twenty dollars. Netflix announcement. So I've got that whole collection. I'm glad to have it, and once in a while it pays to buy something and store it, right? So that thing's gone up in value. That's nice to see. Number one on the list is Incredible Hulk number four forty nine. Uh, first appearance of Thunderbolts, and there is some more news about. Thunderbolt Ross showing up in a in an upcoming movie. Um, I can't remember what movie they were indicating that that he's going to be showing up in, but uh, that book is on the move. Uh, nine eights are around the uh, three hundred fifty dollar mark. So if you've got one of those in your collection, congratulations! It's starting to move up, move up again. Uh, so that was it. Any other notable mentions? Uh, I got an old ghostly weird stories number one twenty two. Six five just sold for forty three hundred dollars. Uh, guide guiding at two hundred. Man, alive! That's a big increase. So if somebody says it's not worth grading a book, um, there's a great example of where it is worth it. Whoops. A uh, two hundred dollar price guide book uh, sells for forty three hundred dollars. So yeah. So on definitely on older books, pre I would say pre nineteen probably pre-1980, uh, getting books graded, especially if they're fairly rare, is definitely worth doing. And there's a great example of of a $200 price guide book going for way more than that, $4,300. Holy smokes. That's a 6.5. That's not even high grade. It's just mid-grade. And the other one there, notable mention, is Heavy Metal, September 2011. Uh, I guess this is an early art germ cover, I guess. Art Germ uh, does well, and there's a lot of people that collect his artwork, so that's on the move. $25 book, not bad. 
So that's all I had for you guys. I know that I went a long time there, almost 30 minutes on this video. Thanks for sticking it out with me. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. And leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this comic haul. Let me know what you think of the Hot 10 list. Uh, I want to thank Marcus again for sending me some awesome books and also highlighting those in the video. Uh, look for my next video probably tomorrow morning. I believe Cover Prices Top 20 will be out. I'll review that list. I'll have that out probably tomorrow morning early. And then maybe one more video this weekend uh, if there's any comic book news or anything worth discussing. All right, guys. Have a great night, and I'll see you uh, tomorrow.